Greetings to all my friends from India and beyond. I'm Paul Booth, I'm visiting. I love the country and happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Uh, what else should I say? Um, <laughs> you guys are great. Really? <laughs> See you in hell. <laughs> See you in hell, people. Your relationship with art has transcended between tattooing, music, fine art, having your own gallery space. Uh -huh. So, what is your view of the relationship between tattooing and fine art, so to say? Well, for me, it all comes from the same place. Tattooing is a discipline, a medium that is one of several for me. I work in paint, clay, 3D design, music, and whatever. And basically, uh, I find that I'm always at the same creative zone, you know, so the same creative juices I put into a tattoo or the same as I put into a painting. It's all in the same place at the root of it all, underneath the medium itself. You know, once you know the tools, yeah. like a tattoo machine, then it goes to the art and, and what lies beneath. And how would you describe that idea of art that you are putting across and coming through these different kinds of mediums? Uh, well, I guess my focus would be dark surrealism. Yeah. Um, that's what I'm into, you know, that's where my art comes from, that's what I'm all about. Um, so, the style, my style, I have a distinct style that remains the same whatever I'm doing. Like, if you look at my work in clay, you'll see the same kind of creative style as you would in a tattoo. And it's because at the root, I'm sculpting, you know? For me, it's sculpting. Like right now on a tattoo, I'm inventing shadows and, and, and deep gaps and, and I'm pushing things away and bringing them forward just like a sculpture. So for me, it's really all the same thing. It's just a different set of tools. And when you're working with the body, you're just using an already sculpted medium and you're just working on that. Yeah, well, you're working on a three-dimensional surface. So it's as complicated as you'd like to make it, really. I like to make it complicated, <laughs> uh, just so I can have something to suffer over. Um, I suppose uh, it's really... Uh, you know, you're trying to do three-dimensional art on a three-dimensional surface, so that can make it pretty complicated. You know, how it fits the body or the canvas is every bit as important differently. And how much of that, of that thrive for experimentation is still on for you? Is it still the oh, same thrive? Thrill? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Probably more than ever. Because, uh, you know, I'm always discovering new things. and. Um, the stuff I'm doing at home is bigger work and fits the, you know, torsos and backs and, and sleeves and, you know, continuing body work. So I'm getting into bigger, working with the musculature of the human body is what thrills me. I like to work with the shapes that are already there, the muscles and, and the anatomy and work that into the tattoo. And I'm doing more of that now than I ever have. So I'm actually quite excited lately. My goal is to create a tattoo that has a truly symbiotic relationship with the body itself that it's, that it's part of. You know, I don't look at a tattoo as being on the body. I look at it not an as in, you know. Yeah. Yeah, it's really not an embellishment. It's a transformation using art to transform the surface of the canvas. Changing the shape of the body is what I'm into. I was reading this crazy piece that was written by an art philosopher about you. About me? Yeah. I'm an art philosopher? Yeah. It oh, I'd love to read that myself. <laughs> oh. And uh, he talks about your form of art therapy. Uh huh. Uh, how, how, how would you describe your form of art therapy? Um, hmm. Um, Well, I have a lot of demons in my head uh, and I have to get them out. So as an artist, art has always been my outlet, my venting process. Mm -hmm. If I don't get it out, then I 
do bad things, you know, and uh, I have to continually um, push it out of myself, you know. And when I'm tattooing, I'm working with other people's demons too, in a way, sometimes, you know, it depends on the client, but some people look for sort of like exorcisms, you know, in their tattoo process. And um, whereas the idea, the concept is that like your traumas, your demons, whatever they may be, the things that plague you as a person, um, depicting them on your skin gives them a face, something tangible to look at so you can find closure by facing and confronting them through the tattoo. Wow. And which works differently than like a painting or anything else. With a tattoo, it's a part of your body. So it hits home a lot harder. So when you're forced to deal with it in a tattoo, you're, you're forced to find your closure from the problem. Yeah. It's crazy that I mean, talk about like, our, our inner demons and us facing our inner demons through through tattoos. Uh, do you think our fears are basically uh, fantasies that we are afraid of fulfilling? I think it depends on the individual. I mean, fears are there's certain fears that are universal, like the fear of death. You know, the average person really. Whether they even think about it or not, their greatest fear is death. And understandably so, because who likes the idea of just coming to an end, you know? That's why religion was invented, to give us answers that we can't live without, you know, in order to lead our lives. A lot of people need religion. I fortunately don't, but, um, but a lot of people do, and I understand that, and I respect that, actually, you know? Whatever it takes to lead a decent life is all that really matters. I'm a live and let live kind of guy. I don't care what you believe in. I don't care what you stick your dick in. I don't care what you do. Just don't affect me. You know, don't put it on me. Don't get involved. You know, leave me out of your bullshit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, you believe what you want to believe. I'll believe what I want to believe. We can disagree. We can agree to disagree, you know? And that's how I live, you know? What do you think that it, I mean, what do you think uh, a tattoo does to a person that nothing else can? Uh, empowerment, like, in a way that I don't think other things can. Uh, empowering in whatever way you're looking for, really. Tattoo is a part of you, so it has a certain strength that other forms of art don't. Tattoo is magical in the sense that it can be something special that's with you forever. What else can be? You know, when you get something symbolic on yourself that means something to you, um, then, hey, you know, um, that kind of empowerment can change your life if you approach the right way. But there's also, you know, people that just want a scary skull for like maybe an armor or a shock value or, you know, something like that. And that's cool too. You know, there really is some something for everything out there. These days, I focus on the, you know, the uh, a lot more on the uh, the exorcism stuff because it's got depth and meaning and purpose. And as a nihilist, I don't find much of that in life. So as a tattooer, I can feel a sense of purpose because it's actually helping people. Not that I'm out to really help people. I kind of hate people, but you know, in general. <laughs> Can you tell us more about the exorcism experience with you? The what? The exorcism tattoo experience. Oh, well, it's, it's a, it can be a series of consultations. Mm -hmm. And uh, I use my judge of character and my skills at, um, in psychology as well as uh, uh, nonverbal communication and, and uh, various things that help me get to the bottom of things. I usually know when someone's lying to me and... You know, so I use all of those resources to pick their brains and, you know, basically it starts with uh, getting to know each other, getting comfortable. And I start sharing some things I kind of entrust them with that relate to them, you know, and open a door for them to feel comfortable to trust me. So it's a give and take situation. You know, we got to build a very special level of trust to really get the traumas out of them. Because, you know, sharing with a stranger is not easily done, you know, but for this, you have to share with me in order to achieve the, the goal. So I have to act as a, uh, 
a bit of a therapist, I guess. Yeah. Uh, in my own way. I don't claim to, you know, I don't have a PhD in psychology, but I have 30 years but even the, even, even dealing with people one on one, so. Even the people with PhDs in psychology are the people who need the shrinks. Well, most, yeah. Let me tell you, I've been going to shrinks most of my life, and most of them I could eat for brunch, you know? <laughs> I brought one to tears once. Pissed. <laughs> Turned the whole thing around on them. Wasting my time. But you know, I mean, you, you, even now, you're dealing with people who are sharing their innermost fears right. and demons with you. Right. And uh, somewhere within yourself, you're also storing all these. It's like mental and, cancer. Yeah. Because it all stays with me. That's why exactly. I have to make art. So it's not just my demons I deal with, it's everyone else's too. They go through me and come back out onto them in art, you know? So it's like this cycling kind of uh, process. You know, when I got my face tattooed years ago, one of the reasons was the shock value. I wanted to go in a grocery store and creep out little old ladies and scare people, you know? And, and it was part of the fun was having some shock value, you know? Now, you're just now okay those same little old ladies come up and pat my head. You know? <laughs> I'm like, yeah! You know? It's so, uh, cute yeah, you know, I'm not cute, <laughs> God damn it, you know? I'm evil. <laughs> Arr, you know? Yeah. So times change. But, you know, with that kind of public awareness and, and acceptance that's happening, I think it's an awesome thing opens a lot of doors for the art to grow and further. It's just, uh, the other hand, you know, tattooers are now the new rock stars, you know? And uh, with that comes some poisonous things that aren't about the art, but more about the glamour, you know? Um, but, you know, you gotta, you know, take the bad with the good. It'll pass. <clears throat> the art will grow. All the bullshit that's walked into the industry from the trendiness of it will fade away because they don't have the staying power. The genuines that come in and want to actually be a good tattoo artist and dedicate themselves to it will shine. And there'll be more of them because of the trend. So yeah. it's kind of waiting it out, you know, weeding out the wigglies, as Pink Floyd would say. You prescribe artists uh who want to keep pursuing the thrill that is involved in tattooing? How do you keep finding the thrill? In keep pushing your envelope. I mean, that's the process of any artist, whether it's tattooing or painting. To me, tattooing is the most uh, complicated, mm -hmm. most intensive, high pressure form of art there is. You know, when I paint, I'm alone. I can chill out. If I fuck up, I can paint over it, you know? When I'm making music, it ain't done till I feel it's done. I can sit there and play with it. And, you know, tattoo, you're committed. You, you don't get a, a second shot, you know. There's no mistakes. And if there are mistakes, you got to be damn good at hiding them, you know. Um, so it's a very demanding medium. And that's why I stay intrigued, because it pushes, tests my skills even after 30 years. And if I don't feel like I'm testing my talent, and getting better and being more efficient and being just better across the board, then there's no point in continuing, you know. I still feel after 30 years that I have more growing to do and I'm excited to grow because I like to look back and see how I have grown, you know, which I never used to before. After 20 years, I started looking back at my work from 20 years earlier, and now I'm seeing work that's 20, 25 years old that you can still see the white in it, you know? How does that make you feel? feels good, because, I, you know, for me, longevity, maybe not for some of these new kids, but for me, longevity matters in a tattoo. You know, I was taught that if it doesn't look good, and if it's not going to look good in 10 years, then it's just not a tattoo. So if you're not thinking about 10 years from now when you're doing a tattoo, then, as far as I'm concerned, just fuck off, because... That's what makes, that's what got me into tattooing was the permanence. Yeah. If it's not permanent anymore, then how is it special? You know? Hey everybody, make sure to check out Tattoo Culture. Good guys. <laughs> Thank you so much. There you go.